Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why not only should we not fear missed lifts, but why we need to learn to use missed lifts as a training tool. And this is one of the things uh, I've done a lot more of lately. You know, for a long time I was doing PR after PR after PR while doing all my random lifts. And now I've pushed things to a point to where as I swap in different accessory movements, things like that, to see where my strengths lay, to see if I'm correcting weak points, I hit more lifts that I miss. And it's not because I'm missing lifts always per se, it's because I am attempting max lifts that are questionable as far as my ability to hit them as I ramp up. I get lifts prior to the ones that I miss, okay? We get lifts prior to the ones that we miss, but we do so without fear. Now, it's important to remember, though, that I rotate lifts a lot. Um, I do a lot of different chain variations, range of motion variations, pause squats, normal back squats, both with chains. Uh, you know, we do different things. We do a lot of different things. Even my overhead pressing, which I almost always take to a failure, I have three different barbells I use. I have chains, no chains, things like that. So we take these things to misses. Sometimes, like if I've detrained a certain assistance movement, I'll go to try a deadlift like the one you saw there, and what happens? I miss it because that muscle is detrained, and I realize that movement needs to come back in. Okay, This is important. This is the important reason why we need to see grindy maxes. We need to see missed lifts. And we need to approach them without fear. We can't approach these lifts with fear that we're going to miss a lift. Look, set your safeties in place. Make sure that you have a strong core, that you're well developed top to bottom. I'm talking about noob lifters here. I am by no means a noob lifter. You guys know I squat mid 500s, deadlift over 600 at 220 in my 40s. Okay, I strict press 225 over my head. I've got a pretty well developed amount of muscle top to bottom. Obviously, have a strong core, strong hips. I'm not going to get hurt from a mislift. And I think that's the thing that, that scares people. They're afraid of getting hurt. Why? If you're tight and you're doing one rep, you very rarely get hurt. Okay, when people get hurt, quote unquote, lifting heavy, it's usually rep work. It's not because they did a single. Because you're tight for a single, you're braced, you're ready. Right, you are anticipating driving with maximum force and you usually are moving the bar in a straight line. When you miss a one rep max, if you're pulled in tight, the weight goes straight down. Right? What happens when I miss this squat coming up here? Do I go into a good morning? No. Bar is midfoot. Bar never leaves my midfoot. When I hit the ground, I come back. Don't get pulled forward. Now, that might look like a scary miss. But you know what? I crawled out from under that and I hit PRs on a supplemental work afterwards. Or afterwards, I came in and I hit heavy lifts. I think I hit a hip thrust PR immediately after doing that. Right? Same thing. When I missed this deadlift, what did I do? I said, you know what? I shouldn't have cut good mornings out of my program. I should have been able to pull this. This would not have even been a PR. few weeks of no good mornings and all of a sudden my mid back isn't strong enough to pull it so we go and we do a bunch of good mornings okay why do we need to miss these lifts see where your weak points are all right see our weak points now this one I just hit 10 pounds less than this with this axle bar press comes up I'm dipping I can't lock it Okay, my triceps are not strong enough what does that tell us it means we need more tricep work now, I did a lot of other pressing that day, but then I ended up finishing that workout with uh, five sets of bodyweight tricep dips to failure. Okay, same thing I think on this one, it was triceps also. Couldn't lock it. Did a bunch of extra tricep work. We need to miss lifts to find our weak links because the only way advanced lifters get stronger, and I'm going to state this again, the only way advanced lifters get stronger is to hypertrophy the weak links in your lifts and it needs to be the weak links in all your lifts you know that's the thing i'll do all these variations and some people say well you identified the weak link on a pause squat with chains that may not affect your main squat well it will very quickly because if i can't generate enough speed on a pause squat without the stretch reflex that tells me that when I try to go 10 pounds heavier than my last raw max, that the same muscles involved in getting me exploded 
through that sticking point five, six inches out of the hole on a pause squat are going to fail me when the stretch reflex is done. Right? Because that's with a much lighter weight than my back squat. Okay, these variations tell you where your different weak points are. They tell you what you need to work on. Because what is it that we know? People always look at assistance work, and this is this is a strategy that I use, and this is the West Side strategy. I do mostly assistance lifts to a wonder at max. And I mean I'm doing an axle bar press. Okay, that's not even a strict press competition. I'm doing chain deadlifts, chain benches, chain back squats or back, chain pause back squats, all this stuff, right? These are supplemental lifts. These are assistance movements. But what is it that people do assistance movements for to get stronger on the main movement? Well, if you identify a weak link in an assistance movement and you fix that weak link, you're stronger at the assistance movement. And if you get stronger at the assistance movement, you get stronger at the main movement. If you get stronger on an assistance movement that would help your bench press as your bench press go up, you get stronger on an assistance movement that would make your squat go up. Does your squat go up? Hopefully this is not a complicated question. I would hope it's not. So yeah, we need to get strong at these. If you find a weak link in a pause squat, or you find a weak link on your squat with 80 pounds of chains, you don't think that that's a weak link that's going to start to come out when you get to a true max? We have to fix these. Okay, the other thing, of course, the only other way to get stronger is to practice maxes. But maxes carry over. People forget that. They think that strength is so specific that the only way you get stronger to max is if you max with exactly the identical bar and movement pattern that you, you want to increase. But that's not true. A box squat will increase your back squat. Okay, it carries over. Doing wonder at maxes on your back squat will make you better at back squatting like the box squat will. I've proven it on this channel before. I PR'd the very first back squat I did in 10 months. Six weeks later, I PR'd it again by another 30 pounds. I built all that with box squats. Okay. Maxing on box squats, chain boxes, band boxes. It carries over. Same thing with my deadlifts. I deadlift over 600 now. How'd I build that? Was it by doing a bunch of conventional deadlifts? No, I went months and months and months and months and months without a conventional deadlift. Did other lifts. And we hypertrophy the weak links. So if you don't take lifts to their limits, you don't take lifts to their limits, how are you going to find your weak links? How are you going to know what, what broke down your ability to follow through on the lift? Okay, because you can see the biomechanics, you can tell what hurts, what muscles we're giving out when you truly miss a rep. Also, let's talk about maxing. People are like, well, you're maxing out all the time. And shouldn't that be enough to find the weak links? Well, in theory, yeah. But how do you know you're really maxing out if you don't ever miss lifts? In other words, if every time you go to hit a big lift, and I had this happen for months, Right, I think I had a month-long streak of not missing a single VR attempt, and I kept them conservative. You know, be like, oh, 605 deadlift. Oh, then we get a 615. Then we get all these different chain weights with 575. Well, that was in between getting the 6, 605 to 615. All right, we do all these things. Same thing, I did all these different variations. And PR'd on tons and tons of chains and then hit a 552 squat. Okay. I had all those PRs, but we didn't get any misses. We went like a month without any real misses. Hitting maxes every day, seven days a week. All right. But how do you know you're maxing? I mean, I could look at that 552 squat and tell you that was probably 100% of my max. I could look at that 615 deadlift, though, and the way it felt and the way it looked in the video and tell you maybe it wasn't a PR. But do we know? In other words, okay, you get a 615 and it feels like it's not a PR. So you don't know what your deadlift is So until you try the 625. And if you miss the 625, you know you were wrong and the 615 was your max. But until you try the 625, you don't know what your max is. So you have to take them to their limits. 
And you have to do it without fear. Okay, these are valuable learning tools. And if you're safe and you have stuff in place, look how many lifts I miss lately. I miss a lot of lifts lately. I'm not getting hurt. I'm not getting injured. I'm not even getting DOMS from it. Okay, it should tell you something. When you do maxes, they become just another thing. They become no different than the guys who come and do their curls every day. Flex in the mirror, it's the same thing. It becomes your normal. It was normal to you. And you lose your fear of it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.